and welcome to Nita Not By The Sea Floss Tube video number 26. I'm Catherine. No, I'm not. I'm Victoria. <laughs> We're keeping that in though. <laughs> and I'm Catherine and my pronouns are she, her. <laughs> I don't even know my name tonight. Um, oh, welcome. Welcome to the, 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 the professional oh. floss tube. Yep. Where we always get the, uh, the days right. So for those of you, uh, oh, don't whack the table sorry because we'll get comments it is thursday the 3rd of march now this is a change to our normal videoing day which is usually a tuesday but catherine and i were both ill on tuesday not covid no i had a, a covid rat test though mm, i had a migraine so i just slept mm. but we think we're going to make thursday our normal filming day anyway so just change yes. of life this year and yes thursday works better Tuesday is cheap night at the cinema. <laughs> I'm on a budget and I could maybe go out with hubby once uh, every uh -huh. fortnight or something to the cinema. Uh, and also he goes out on Thursday and I'm needy wife and I don't like, I'd rather not be in the house if he's not going to be here because then I feel like he's having a life and I'm not or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> uh -huh. And Victoria acquiesced. Because yeah, oh, I'm, I'm easy. Well. Yeah. Um, um, yes, weird, weird fortnight to be filming with what's happening in the very world. Very weird, yeah. Um, in case you haven't, um, watch Diary of a Physicist Farm Girl. They have a very eloquent, uh, sorry, Diary of a Physicist Farm Girl and, um, Daybreak Stitchery. They both had quite eloquent, um, videos where they started talking about um, what's going on in the world and just in case I don't know it has felt weird to it's me. been very it's been a very unsettled week it has felt weird to me because um, the horrificness that's happening uh, in the in Ukraine is not the only horrific thing that's happening in the world um, but everybody has gone like let's help Ukraine and, and that has felt uncomfortable to me and I have not felt like jumping on the bandwagon um, for, for various reasons but of course it's an awful thing that's happening and of course we want to help so um, is this a good time you can talk about what you've done and then I, I can, can talk about what I've done sure yeah sure okay so <clears throat> um, I was going through the uh, Instagramness on was it Saturday and someone I follow talked about starting a stitch salon with using a pattern by a Ukrainian designer who sells her patterns on Etsy. Um, she lives in Ukraine. I think I'm mispronouncing that, it's very late. Um, Ukraine, oh that's right. Yeah, for some reason I want to say the oh. Ukraine. Mm. Um, so, so anyway. Um, I don't think there are any actual details about dates or times, there's a hashtag that's up, but the designer and the pattern that people are going to do is Stitchy Print, so the, the shop is stitchyprincess.etsy.com and it's this magical swamp. It's absolutely charming. Um, the lovely wee pattern. Uh, so I have bought that and I bought a number of other patterns from this designer as well to just to support people at this time. And she has, the designer, Stitchy Princess, has been commenting on her Instagram channel and she's thanked everyone for um, purchases through the store and how it's enabled her to go and stock, stock up on food and she's done so well with her sales she's been able to share the love a bit. Mm. Um, so really good things because of course during war the, the people that really, they suffer, everybody suffers um, yeah. but it tends to be that women and children suffer the most. Absolutely. So it definitely feels good to be able to help people like that. So we will add the Instagram, her handle down the bottom in the mm. notes and I'll also um, put it at Etsy store. Mm. I also like to think that everybody's like, you know, there's a way you can search by country and you can search for people that are based in, in Ukraine so that it's not just one popular on Etsy designer that gets the love, but a range of people. Yeah. Um, and the, so I think it's really great that you've done that. So I've done that and I've also donated to the Red Cross. Yeah. I have, I, of course I'm having lots of thoughts as I do. Um, I've, I spent at least a week trying to decide where I would put my dollars and then Kim from cataloging my stitches she 
put a, a suggestion um, of um, a place to donate, which is a, a, an American charity, a United States of American charity that um, does sort of kitchen support, like food relief in courses within America, but also outside of America. And I was going to donate to them. And then like straight after there was another posting on Instagram and there was, there was someone that had worked for NGOs and they were saying that the best way to donate is to donate to grassroots. So if you can find a charity that is in the country, that's mm -hmm. the most effective thing. And I thought, well, I'm in New Zealand and that's an American charity to help Ukraine. So I thought, well, I'm not going to do that. But I think it's, you know, it's a good avenue for if you're American. Um, but I decided to donate to the International Red Cross for Ukraine yeah, because I didn't what? I didn't know this because um, apparently there's been conflict um, for eight years in the border in the northern part of the border which I didn't know anything about um, I don't I, I, I look not to look to the news because I, I find it difficult but they will already have systems in place I felt to yeah. be able to help um, you know so the, the channels to, to kind of push help through are hard to sort of mm. get in motion so they'll have systems in place but then it also got me thinking you know um every time there is a crisis you know have people rushed to to donate to syria or to palestine or to all those families that were separated from their children at the mexican american border mm. i mean and so that got me thinking about what am i doing to make my own community better you know, there's always need in our communities it's not at international levels so that just got me thinking one of the things that i'm i'm keen to to really focus on this year is to try and find maori and pacifica designers that do like knitting and cross stitch and quilting you know designers that are minorities in my community so in new zealand the, the one of the significant minorities are Maori, which are the people of this country, um, and Pacifica. We have a lot of Pacifica New Zealanders. Um, so if you if you have a floss tube and you're Maori or Pacifica, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you have a knitting podcast, that would be great. Um, but let's, yeah, for me, that, that that's what works for me. This is difficult. Everybody's trying to do their best. Like people have really good intentions, but it hasn't. I haven't felt it like an easy, like immediate thing to do. Um, Anyway, so this is a floss tube. <laughs> We're going to try and keep it light from now on. We will. On. Um, we will. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we hope everyone's everywhere, wherever you are. You're doing okay. Yeah. And we'll move on. So, just for comic element, I'm like doing that to my hair now. Um, anyway. As we mentioned in uh, the previous episode's floss tube, we have reached our one year anniversary. We, our philosophy. Our philosophy. I did quite like that. Mm -hmm. um, we have done. We have got a winner. We used the YouTube, not the YouTube. We used a random comment picker. It was a YouTube comment picker. It was. Yeah. Something we found on the internet. Um, so we have a winner. Do we want to say who that is? Sure. Sure. So we are. So we got forty comments. Um, and, and there were people that didn't comment because apparently people watch people watch things on their TV and you can't comment you can't on your comment. TV. This is why you don't comment. But commenting mm -hmm. is the tax you pay for us doing this. So comment. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just putting it out there. Oh. Um, so anyway, we got um we got a person. Yep. You were gonna say it. No, I wasn't. I was looking at it. Oh. You. I don't know. Oh sorry, name. sorry. <laughs> I was trying to be fair. <laughs> I just put her on the spot. And I was like, um, I don't know how to Kathy pronounce... Kathy Balcom. Yeah, and we are not... We don't know any information about Kathy. We, so we will, where she's from. Yeah. So we will message Kathy and... Um, so that, like, to sound like the pros, we will put a comment in your comment. We'll put a comment in your comment, yeah. With, a, with an email address. <laughs> and um, hopefully Kathy will tell us a little bit about herself. Um, yes, yeah, so we will comment on your comment. Please... You need to let it, it's I think it's better if you contact contact us via Instagram. So our Instagram handles are there because then that's private. You can send us a direct message. And as far as I'm concerned, we need your home address to deliver a package. Yes. And also, please let us know if you are a knitter. Yes. Um, so 
Yeah, we don't want to send you um, yarn stuff you're, you're not, not going to use. It. Yeah. yeah, and also if there is something that you really hate, yeah, um, just let us know because we don't want to send you things you don't yeah. want. Yeah. So where you're from? If there's anything, because we th we're thinking we might send some food along with it. Snackies. So if you've got any dietary requirements, that would be great. And if there's anything in New Zealand that you've always wanted to try as well, that would be awesome. Great. Okay, so that's one bit of admin. So we've done that. So we've got it with a list. I'm ticking we had, we had to like, organize ourselves because we just made our lives more complicated than they yes. needed to be. The second bit of admin, our stitch along. So there's been quite some quite positive feedback about doing that. So we, Our Zoom. Our Zoom session. Our yeah. Zoom session. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. No, it's I'm that, Catherine, but... remember? <laughs> She's had a hard week. Yeah. It, I mean, people, you, you may want oh. to stitch or not, but it's a Zoom session that we're running. It's a Zoom session. Yeah. We're going to run it, New Zealand time, this Saturday at 8 o'clock. It's very short notice. Sorry. That's just all we can do. Yeah. And it's a trial. Let's see how it goes. Um... Remember, we're ahead of you. Yes, we we're are. We're in the future. We are. So we're giving you an extra day because Saturday for us is Friday for most of the world. Yeah. So it's going to be this Saturday, 8 p.m. New Zealand time. New Zealand time. And we're going to, get, we're going to create a, a, a Zoom session and we're just going to put it in the body of the, the video description because I've seen um, Deborah from Diary of a Physicist Farm Girl do it that way. Mm -hmm. And she has similar number of followers. Um, and she's not complained that she's being like trolled or anything unpleasant happening. So we're going to try it that way because it seems much easier. Excellent. And for the Spanish session, I'll tell you when the Spanish language one is going to be. Two people were interested, so that's exciting. We, I can't please both people. You have to do this. Because New Zealand's <laughs> awkward. Yeah, yeah, we're apparently quite awkward. Yeah. So... We will add that information. Don't panic if this video is up before the link is there. Quite often, I'll get the link link up tonight, and Catherine will put the. Oh, I will get the video up tonight. Honestly, we should just scrap this whole thing. No, this is great. <laughs> this is great. We're perfect. I'll get the video up tonight, and Catherine will add their meeting in tomorrow. Is it okay? Sure. Because she knows about the Zoomy things. I I often go in and add things to she the does. comments the day yeah. after. Yeah. Um, of course, if it takes us 24 hours to load this video, we might have to rethink the whole thing. Oh, just scrap it. We'll do it next week. Oh, okay, I think that's... Um, that's, that's, that's all the, 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 the newsy... Are we going to mention that or not? Oh, yeah. So just a little teaser. I don't think we should show it. Okay. Yeah. Well, so a little teaser. So because we've been doing the floss tube for a year now, mm -hmm. um, we thought it would be very exciting. I don't know if you remember way back in one of the many episodes, I showed you a sampler that I had bought, an antique sampler. Um, so we have decided that to sell, as part of the celebrations um, of our one year floss anniversary, yeah. we are going to, we're in the process of making a little small um, with one of the motifs from the sampler. We're almost there. Big lies. We have a lot to do. We've done the charting, but there's a lot to a pattern apart from the chart. Yeah. And we're going to put it up for. So we're going to create an Etsy shop so that you can download it for free. Yeah. Because. But it might nice be a to learn. Weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's probably going to be a couple of weeks, but it's it's just so nice to learn new skills and yeah. you know feel like you're growing as a human. Yeah. It was really. I really enjoyed the charting process. She did. It's my jam, poor old Catherine. I think I might have snapped it. <laughs> she micromanaged me a little bit. That's great. <laughs> Which uh, I, I love, I love, because it's like, oh, Victoria, this other side yeah. to you. <laughs> now, is the uh, sun annoying? Because I've got like, I mean, I, I feel know you've I'm, got a I'm very holy. I've got a chin. halo. I've um, got a, it's, it's this I don't think you've got no curtains, so I don't think there's anything we can do. No. Unless you want I'm just wondering if we shift a tiny bit that way and tilt it. Right. I'm going to see how do this Do you have works. space? Because I've got space. Shall I tilt it? We can tilt it. Oh, look, this is all going to go to custard. I've plucked my um, chin hair, so... It's quite safe for me to there we come go. this close. I'm just gonna... That was elegant. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should move that way, move that way, move that way. So my house is for sale <laughs> and I thought we were getting uh, someone to view it. So the whole house has been dusted by me. Well, what can I tell? You can do this. And it's all very respectable. Wow. Did and they then, not turn up? No, I got a phone call saying that they decided, the realtor decided not to do it because they, they didn't want to be driving the person in their car during COVID. 
because I don't know this person from Adam. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they told me just before I started vacuum cleaning. It was brilliant. So I well, haven't vacuum cleaned. Is, but you had to dust. I dusted everything and I tidied up and I made my bed beautiful. I aired my bedroom. <sighs> mm. I felt very virtuous. So anyway. Excellent. Anyway, so that was that. So life news. Life news. What am I doing? Oh, okay. So in the last two weeks, what are we, we had a stitchy weekend away. Oh, we, we went did. up to your house. <laughs> weekend of tears. Oh. <laughs> Catherine will tell you why it was a weekend of tears because it's her news. Um, but anyway, we went away. I worked on some projects. Catherine worked on some projects. It was great. Got home and I did washing. We're having some, some changes at work at the moment. We're having one of my colleagues is leaving. And so work has been uh, busy while we're working out what's happening there. Uh, so I haven't had an awful lot of time to stitch, but I am quite happy with what I've managed to get done. Mm. And last weekend I did nothing but stitch, so it was great. Nice. Mm. Uh, my news. Um, so, Christinita went to the Halls of Residence at Otago. So, Victoria very kindly said that she would go away with, for the weekend with me so that I could just wallow in self pity slash being happy for my youngest that was flying the nest. Your lenses are reflecting. I'm oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, we had a, it was just a quiet weekend. It was kind of okay, and every so often I would get very melancholy, because I do like to wallow in melancholy, <laughs> melancholia, if you can say that. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was good. It was, it was a good weekend. And then my other daughter, well, so then Christina got COVID, which was kind of inevitable. I mean, like, um, we are talking about the students going to university as, as being a super spreader event. Just because of the nature of it you know mm. it's just um new zealand's such a small country and in inhabitants and like so many kind of crisscross <laughs> yeah going to the different you know so otago was like the first one but otago starts first from all all the universities here i think it's just a week ahead so of course a week later wellington has started mm. so my daughter in wellington is actually she's got a third job um back in the halls helping feeding students and stuff and in fact, I'm volunteering to feed students ne from next week in my lunch hour. Because um, there's a lot of need, there's a lot of people. And they're not s sick, thank goodness. Thank goodness New Zealand's at this stage where we're mostly all vaccinated. That's a huge proportion of people are vaccinated. So people are not getting super sick, which is great. Mm. Uh, but they still have to isolate. So my poor child is um, in her bedroom for 10 days, Oof. which is kind of tough because I'm not supposed to go there and mollycoddle her, um, apparently. <laughs> Um, I did have confirmation in the Spanish class. <laughs> it was like, yes, it's very different to be a parent of a, a Latin American child in an English-speaking country. Apparently, you have to give them space. <laughs> I was like, I know, I know. So anyway, I've been texting, but not, not um, crowding her. So that's something that happened. Um, so yeah, I've just been doing a lot of stitching. I'm still rejoicing. I have a gardener. Did I mention that? He came today. It's great. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And I'm doing lots of projects. I'll talk about my projects. I'm, I've been making lots of progress with things. So that's kind of been good. Take my mind off things. I think that's it. I think we should crack on and get started. All right. Victoria, do you have any finished objects? No. Catherine, do you have any finished objects? Well, I think I do. <laughs> so did I mention that Christina left home? <laughs> Um, I finally finished my uh, Whip It Good project. So I've got the chart here, so I will show it. Um, because it is a goodie. I think it's quite old. It's a lovely one. And I'm quite old, so I had to have it explained to me. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. So this is the chart. Whip It Good. Beautifully made. Heart it's string. by Heartstring Samplery. Um, and I didn't use the call for fabric or thread. I used... I completely, this is no good. Bloody sun. That's wrong. <laughs> okay. So, because Christina had gone away, I was, I was kind of thinking, and then I thought, I know what I'm going to do. Because in the end, she actually didn't want this because she also cross stitches, and she felt like she wants her cross stitches for herself, which is fair enough. But then I was thinking about her. So what I decided is I decided that I was going to Write her initial, which is C. She's a star, so there's a little star there. 
And then 2022 is the year she went to university and a little heart. But you're going to keep it? I'm going to keep it, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. And That's I also gorgeous. did a, a drawn hem with a pink thread as well. Oh, look, I have to cut my thread here. But I went all around. And I'm kind of toying with the idea of um, making it into a cushiony thing. But just to have, not to stick pins into it. I just think it's so pretty. This is the worst, like, soon the sun will go down. And, but this is just the prettiest project. And I also didn't do the, there are some, like, thread lines that you do. I didn't, I didn't think this benefited from having that, so I didn't do that. So, yeah, really pleased. Excellent. Yeah, finally. So this is, this is one of the first ones that I started, so it took a while to kind of figure out what, how I wanted to finish it. So I'm very pleased with that. I've also discovered that I don't like stitching on 32 count. <laughs> not, your, not your thread? Oh, we left some very important news out of the news bulletin section of this. <gasps> oh, my God, one, two, three, stitch. <laughs> one, two, three, stitch is posting to New Zealand. Yeah, it, it started posting about two days ago, and then yep. I got my email saying, yes, we're posting to New Zealand again. Yeah. With delays. And of course. Can I just say that I watched um, Saltbox Stitcher today, and of course she always has things you want. So I was, because I was preparing an order for 123 Stitch, um, everything she had that I wanted sold out on 123 Stitch. I wonder if they're going to like recognize the influence that she has in the community. I'm sure that's why it's sold out. This is what I'm yeah. saying. So they'll just contact her and say, look, can you just let us know a couple of weeks in advance what you're going to show? Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's, that's out as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, they don't have that either. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I wanted to get was, um, oh, I've forgotten their name, Anne and Ooh. Uffington, Ullington. Oh, I've forgotten their name now. It's two sisters. It's a sampler with two sisters. Oh, yes, I know the one. Um, sold out. <laughs> Oh no, was it sold out? One of them is sold out. Anyway. So, are you going to wait to order? Or are we going to just We need do... to talk about it, because the other bit of news is that I, I was told by Zeb today. She posted something. I think Zeb has a better budget than I have. Um, she posted something on Instagram, and I saw it, and I, I just thought I'd ask her, and I said, is there a D-Stash site in New Zealand on Facebook? Because there is no point in buying from D-Stash abroad. It would cost so much to get it posted. There was just no point. And she said there were two sites. So I think we need to be strategic and like have a chat. Yeah. But I follow both of them and I didn't see the stuff that Zeb bought. So I can't be following it that closely. Well, maybe you're not following it with intent. I don't know how these things work. No, even. I don't know how these things work either. Because I've been, um, I've just uh, binge watched um, Olivia B, who I love. Olivia, you're definitely not watching this channel, but I sent you a message. I was like fangirling. <laughs> Just saying, I love your... And now she's doing quilty ones as well, which is very exciting. Um, but she was saying that she buys a lot on these stash. And um, she was saying there's, there's, they also have... Some of them have lists where you can put wants. Oh! I have to do, we have to do some investigation. Yeah. Anyway, so two exciting news, I, thought, I felt. That is very exciting. Okay, so that was my finish thing. So Excellent. how about we do whips now? But you start with the whips. I'll start I, with the yeah. whips. So I will start... I'm going to get a good drink. I will start with the most unexciting progress that I made. And it's just unexciting because you've seen me do this one a lot. Oh, this is my sampler, isn't it? This is Catherine's sampler, <laughs> yep. So, oh, standing up. This is Merrily Merrily We Welcome Spring by Blackbird Designs. And I, when Catherine and I were, well, look, you're just looking at my cleavage. Isn't that nice? What a treat. What a treat. <laughs> it's not even anything showing, but oh well. So, when we were away, I finished that line there I think and did the underline and started the next one so that entire alphabet is down so one more alphabet to do I think so as you can see it finishes T so there pretty. do they and suggest that you do it one over one or is that just you no that's just me okay so there we go that's coming on along nicely very lovely I think I'm gonna I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna sweet talk you and then I'm gonna get that chart off you and I'm gonna do that one that's my plan. That's my mastermindfully planness. Okay, it's awesome. Um, what have I been working on, uh, stitchy wise? Okay, so oh, we have the questions there. By the way. Oh yeah. But we, there might not be time because twenty-four minutes. That's we might, right. We have to do it next time. Anyway. No, no, we'll do it this time. Okay. 
So, I have been working on my family and friends. Um, and I was going to go all around the edge, and then it turned out that you couldn't go around the edge because there were no points of reference. You stopped having them. You, you actually had to go into the middle to get your points of reference. So I did this one here. It's still not finished. Oh, yeah, I forgot to finish that, didn't I? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. I was okay. a bad friend. No, no, she's just, just funny. She's just funny. I'm just saying, we're all human. Oh. But this is what I noticed that Victoria does. And Victoria hadn't noticed, so we both had a little giggle about it. Mm. So when I say to Victoria, oh, look what I've done, Victoria, finish this. She takes it. Then she <laughs> commandeers my pattern and compares them to see if I've done it right. <laughs> and she wasn't even aware that she was doing it. I think Victoria's going to retrain as a primary school teacher. <laughs> Uh, um, Victoria, are you like supervising my work or something? And she was like, oh my God, I hadn't even realised that I do this. It was so, hilarious. something to work on for me. But then she spotted that I had missed a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> but then she was like a good teacher. She gave me a good, like, you know, good, bad, good. She was like, oh, it's really good that you finished. You've missed these things. So it's really nice how the colours play. <laughs> you know, the sandwich. Um... <laughs> So I missed some stuff here. Yeah. And somewhere else, but here. That's, that's where it's thing. obvious yeah. to me. But it's such a cute wee motif. Oh, look, I did it again. Oh, I need to It's really obvious when corner. you're like, put your glasses on, mm. roll your sleeves up, and you grab your friend's stuff, and you're like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Not all sweetness and light is what I'm saying. Bad friend. Bad <laughs> no, friend. Funny friend. Oh. Anyway, so I've made... I'm making good progress, so... Maybe I'll get another page done Excellent. in the next fortnight. I'm kind of thinking that this is the next thing that I suddenly just want to go and finish. Oh, you're almost there. You can see it. I have so many rules. I cannot keep... Because we've also discovered that I like massive projects. Mm -hmm. I just can't have like... I'm not going to have 30 massive projects. I can't afford the linen. <laughs> Bottom line. Two babies at mm. uni. <laughs> so... So I'm very happy with this. Yes. And that's the, oh, what was the linen? The linen was um, a 35 count um, Edinburgh. And it's called flax. The color is flax. And you like that better, obviously, than the 32? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do you reckon it goes smaller again? And I think 40 is my favorite. Mm. Um, and it, the color is 106, DMC 106, which is a variegated one. I actually, I was looking at my stash because I couldn't quite afford the linen that I wanted. I was like, what do I have? <laughs> my stash is like this big. <laughs> I have a 46 Ooh. I literally could not see the lines <laughs> mm. so I'll, I'll, um, I'll have a play with that excellent yeah anyway good progress I'm happy what about you so the next one I worked on was this uh, Narnia mystery stitch along by uh, the stitching book club which has sold out I know it um, after you mentioned it to me, after you showed it to me, I, I noticed a couple of people talking about it on the yeah. YouTubes. Um, so the second part is due out tomorrow, I think, the 5th. So I've got the first part all finished, and I love the way the threads uh, gradiate. Graduate? Gradiate? Oh, words are not my friend today. Apologies, people. But there we go. Looking great. I it like the sparkly like a sort of fabric. ombre effect. Ombre, isn't it? Yes, it does. They kind of radiation. Yeah. yeah, that's cute. And you're you're doing it on a um, sparkliness. Sparkliest. It's a um, opalescent. Opalescent. Yeah. I think it's thirty-two count. Grand. That's so that, that's all ready for me to print off the next bit when it's um, issued and get a cracking on there. I do have to say I've been working from home since just before Christmas. It's hard to print at home since you don't have a printer. When mm. I don't have a printer. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I don't print much, but every so often it's like, ah, oh, I can't print. Um, okay, so my next one is my own sampler that I'm working on. And so this is the one that I decided that I was going to do that was New Zealand based. And I've made quite a bit of progress, I feel. So I'm now working on the little house. And last time when I showed you, I realized that I'd missed a line. I hadn't gone back, so I filled that in. It was somewhere here. I filled it in. 
I've also completed the inner white and the further inner green and I've got a title so you can see it says oh gosh Pukehiki library and it all fitted and you'd be proud of me because this is the second time I embroidered it because oh, when well I embroidered done. it the first time the, the spacing wasn't right did you do some frogging I often do frogging I just don't tell you about it anyway Pukehiki library I'm very pleased with this it's lovely um so yeah I just this is a project that requires me to think you can't even see Puk all that effort and you can't even see Pukehiki <laughs> library um it does require effort to kind of think about mm -hmm. my next design idea. Oh look, I can show my embroidery that nobody could see last time apparently. Mm. I did such a big show of it and you can't see it on the screen. <laughs> We're so good at this. <sighs> yes, nice. Yeah, so I'm happy with the progress. Excellent. So, oh, and did I say the name? That was um, number 12 Stitch Co. Silvery Moon. Um, Silvery Moon, 36 count. So I like this as well. And I went on, on number 12 Stitch Co. I was like daydreaming about my linen purchases and of course Nicholas hurt her hand. Oh no! Was, yeah, no, she posted on Instagram a couple of weeks back. There's very little linen left, so nothing I wanted. So that was good slash bad. <laughs> yeah. So my the next one I worked on was a peacock, <clears throat> a unicorn and or and a badger, which is this lovely one by Scarlet Letter. And what do we do? I've got a whole nother motif done. Woohoo! So, that flower down the bottom. We're keeping it clean. Um, keeping it clean, you can all see what it looks like. It's very Giorgio O'Keefe, I felt. Yeah. But I wanted to move down, so essentially I think there's another two lines and that's the bottom of it, so I wanted to make sure I had enough um, <laughs> hemming, and I do. But I know it's a bit of a tight fit, fit on this, but oh, I love this project so much. This is not um, full coverage, is it? Is, is it grey stitched? Yeah, it's all full coverage. So the green is stitched, yeah. Is it green? Okay, I can. It looks like grey. No, it's green. What do I know? I'm going to be 50 this year. I don't have to look, see well. Wow. Again, this is another one that has started to come up in floss tubes that I watch. Mm. So that's funny. It's because it's gorgeous. Mm, mm. I think it's beautiful. Good for you for having the patience. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next one is my little inverted sampler. Okay, this is great. Um, so this one is called Mary Hill, Upside Down Numbers. And it's out of a book, isn't it? Yeah. It's a library book, yeah. So that's my working copy. And I have done one more line. So I'm down to three lines now. So I'm very happy with that and it's kind of ridiculous like the numbers um, there are numbers there are letters some of the letters are half a half of color and then it changes it's just great I love it and this will be a pin cushion I've decided um, and the other thing that I really love about this so this is the one that's so, to tease Victoria which you know she's not being teased because I'm kind of following she's the following pattern. the pattern so I have no issues with it whatsoever kind of <laughs> not really um, it's a suggestion mm. I'm using um, a lot of Victoria's leftovers from previous projects. Previous projects, like way from way back. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of these are actually anchor, not DMC, and they're working out great. And sometimes I just need to do like two stitches. So this is great because there are some really little bits. And let's face it, I would never buy the amount of beige there is in here. So it's great to have it. <laughs> I think they were from my Art Nouveau ladies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just fabulous. I love using up these things. Excellent. It is great. All right. So the next one I have had out again is Wicked, St Wicked Siblings by Mama Witch Stitch. And I have got the boy finished, or the child wearing the blue sailor suit. Oh, the colours showing up real well there. There we go. It's more realistic. It's super cute. It is very adorable. I have gotten used to stitching on black. It's not so bad as it was when I first started. And it's also bigger than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. I feel this is going to be much larger than I had anticipated, which is why I think when I frame it, it'll be in a, um, a quilting hoop. So are you, is this, so it says 14 counts, which must be Ada. Mm -hmm. So it would be 28, wouldn't it? Yep. Um, is this, I think that's a 32. Right, so it will still be 
I would have still expected it to be smaller. But it's, you can't tell with a hoop, can you? Because no. all the hoops are different. Yeah. This is very adorable. I love the little the little legs sticking Wee. out the shorts. So like a child. <laughs> yeah. Skinny knees. Yeah. Very good. Um, my next thing that I started to work on the other, the other day I felt, I've been a bit ill. I was ill for about five days. And you know when you just cannot think? Like the idea of doing like something where I had to like count two and then do two more and then count three more and it was just too much. So I pulled this out, which is the, the sort of folk blouse that I'm making for myself. Um, did you also notice that in in Ukraine they have folk, folk blouses that have like similar motifs and cross stitch and that sort of thing? That's been coming up in my Instagram as well. So anyway, I did some of the stars. So I'm just making it up as I go along, but I've used um, I've used the book that Margarita. So this fabric is from Margarita that she sent to us from Luxembourg, and I'm using. The book, one of the books that she sent us, um, I'm using some of those motifs because they're pretty universal. They're in lots of places, so I love that. And I'm using um, the floss that I was given by another viewer. Um, Carol? I think so, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Which is that one that variegates, but not You're that lovely. fast. Yeah. It's lovely. Um, so I've now figured out that I don't have to do stitch by stitch. I can do like six and then return and it works out. Working still fit, yeah. excellent. Yeah, so I'm really happy with this. And it's looking great. It's I'm very meditative. It's very meditative now, so I'm very happy. Yep. All right. So my last one that I worked on this week. As you can see, I was really happy. I managed to get everything to a really good place to stop it and move on to the next. So I was pretty pleased. I have got a new start. This is a pattern that I bought around this time last year because it was my birthday present to myself when I did that big shop. It was part of this. Apparently so, that's a thing. This is Springfield 1817 sampler. It is by Twin Peaks Primitives. Did you buy that at Stitch Witches or did you? No, this was one, two, three. Okay. So I did a big order. So it was a planned thing. Yes. And when I first got it, I was going to do it in the DMCs, and then I decided I was going to do it all in the variegated threads because I jumped on that bandwagon. And when I actually came down to do it, I've decided to do it in the DMCs. Had you bought the threads, the other threads? Yeah. You're funny. But no, I decided I was going to do it in the, the DMCs, and I'm, I think I really like it. It's w not quite my... It'll be making you nervous, won't it? It's not quite my colours that I would have picked for myself. They're very bright, but I really like it. But see, I think strangely, it goes very well with your Look tapestry yes. piece. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. So I'm quite pleased. So these are the called for DMC colours. So if we put it next to the pattern, yeah. It doesn't look like it's going to be quite... Oh, I don't know. See, it kind of does look bright here. Yeah, it does. So, for those that are interested, I'm stitching this on a 36-count salted caramel from number 12 Stitch Co. That's interesting, because I was looking at salted caramel, and I wasn't sure if I would like it, but that's lovely. This is it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I wasn't so sure about the fabric again, because it's a little bit more orange, I think. But actually, it's lovely. I'm very pleased. Mm. I wasn't sure when I, we came down to do it whether it was going to be too dark, but... I'm super, super pleased. It almost looks like beading, it's so bright. Yeah, so I'm doing it two stitches. Two over two, two threads over two. I'm really sorry, people, this is not a good day. Um, two threads over two. <laughs> That's what I've put up with. <laughs> oh, um, so it's quite thick on a 36 count. And it I was inspired thick. to do this because when Catherine and I were away, we watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've got back on their costumes. <laughs> And we were watching um, Brenda and Laura Laura from um, Brenda, Brenda and the Serial, Serial Starter. Starter. I'm getting there. I'm yeah, getting yeah. there. Sorry. Um, and they had their wonderful, their last video. Or my <laughs> the my Parade of now. Greatness. The Parade of Greatness from all those women that they had. And one of those women had done one, I think they'd done two threads on a 40 count. And it was, it was amazing. So that's why I decided I was going to... Isn't it funny the things you notice? I don't recall that at Do all. Do you not? No. Oh. 
No, I, I, I finished watching that video and decided that all of my future projects had to be on 40 count because that seems to be what everyone is doing. It was so funny because you were <laughs> so wrapped oh, in the video. So, uh, Victoria hasn't been watching Flosstube for quite a while. Um, and I, I watch Flosstube every night and yeah. in the day as well. And, um, and so you were like a child that has just discovered like candy shops. I was on the edge of my seat she was. with my phone. <laughs> And every time someone brought a new pattern up, I was like, oh, 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 find it, find it, find it, take a screenshot, get it on my list. I, I mean, I was doing that as well. Victoria very kindly took lots of photos yeah. so that I could... Um, but seriously, the screen was here and my face was there, you know? She was very intense. I was into it. It was great. <laughs> and who else did we watch in that weekend? We watched The Woman Who's Dying Her Own Fabric. Well, that doesn't narrow it down. Oh. Oh, yes, Rachel. Rachel, Yes. Um, so she's she's a, a dyer. Um, she's been mentioned by Carol and Laura and Brenda. Um, I can't remember what her company's called, but she hasn't been doing it for long. And, she, and but she's got seven floss tube videos out now. So she's decided to do a floss tube to kind of you know promote her new brand of dyed linens, but also to connect with people and stuff. And mm. she's been stitching like serious stitching for a long time. So she's been showing some amazing, amazing. patterns that she's got and yeah. works that she's done. Yeah, and she's another one that does um, like secondhand shopping. She's always joking that she decorates her house with. She's American, so she says garbage, um, which is funny. But a lot of her frames are secondhand that she just picks up and does it herself. Excellent. With a great finish. Sorry. Thank you. So that, that? that that's all I've worked on in the last <clears> two weeks. I've just carried on because I don't have a life now. All I do is craft. So my next one that I made progress on was um, Cuando se corona un gusto, which is the Mexican sampler from the 19th century. So would that be 18 something? That's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It always goes down. Um, and I completed another line. And this is funny because the words run into one another. That's the version I decided to do and you can't really read it. <laughs> So I, but I completed, like my plan is that every time I pick this up, I will complete a line. And that's the, the full stop is a little X. And I liked it because it's got a little key. Um, one of the things that I want to do, all of my craft supplies are in the other house now. Yes. Which makes my life a little bit hard. But one of the things that I want to do is I want to make a lot of smalls this year. Oh, okay. Um, Even though you've just said 10 minutes ago that you really like the big, big projects. Yeah, but I think it's just for sanity. I, I want sure. to do smalls yeah. because I, it'll be like, Ugh. Yeah, so you can see. And also, quick. can I just say I have lots of small bits of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want to go through all my things and my design books that I have mm -hmm. um, and pick out lots of keys. And, oh, and, do, a little, and do a little pin cushion with just keys. Cute. And the other one as well is, um, now that we're getting into like, we're doing the, the chart for, for the sampler that I have. Um, I want to see if we can... Someone from, from my previous job gave me a massive pair of scissors that his granddad had because he was a tailor. Oh, cool. You would know him. If I remembered his name, you would know who he was. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't know what to do with it, but it was his granddad's. And I was just like, I have no shame. I was like, hi, what are you doing with the scissors? They're so beautiful. Do you, are you going to keep them? Because if you're going to take them to the old shop, I'll have them. <laughs> He gave them to me. Oh, but I wondered if I could photocopy them, convert it into PDF, and then upload it to, and stitch it. Yeah, it'd be cool. I thought that would be really cool. And then I thought, well, since I know someone that has lots of scissors, we could do the same with the rest the of them, them and yeah. have them really you little. You have my wee fairy scissors all over you. Don't know about that. But anyway, so anyway, I'm really happy with this. Um, this is a massive sampler. Mm. Um, it's, it's big, but there's so much negative space. I don't think it's going to take forever. The thing is that I do, I change. Like, I, I don't do more than one sentence per sitting. Yeah. And once it's, I've done one sentence, I just move on to the next. That was my plan. But anyway, I'm very happy. I'm, you know how happy it makes me to have things in Spanish. So I'm very happy with that. And I do have more that I've been working on. Sorry. Jeez, you have been a busy bee. I know, I know, I know. Like literally all I do is I have my job and then I stitch. Marty and I, we barely cook proper meals. I mean we do, but it's all very easy. Tomorrow it will be mushroom omelette. Ooh, nice. 
Okay, so the next one is, um, oh my God, I love this one. I'm so in love with this one. Is um, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Um, again, by Heartstring Sampler. By Heartstring Sampler. I think I have a thing for her. And also, the reason I'm not sure about the one, two, three order is because, consider the lilies, is out of stock. It's out of stock. Oh. How is that possible? I think what's happened is that obviously they've opened up the postage to New Zealand and everyone's just gone, right, empty my wish list that I've been creating over the past six months. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what happened to me because some of my wish lists had some very bizarre things that I am definitely not interested in stitching. So I cleaned it up as well. Good job. So anyway, this is lovely. And this is what's made me realize that I just love a massive project. This is so great. And I'm choosing my own colors and that's super fun. So... I did more since Ooh, you last saw me. You have done more. Yes. Do you want me to inspect it against the pattern? <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to stop you from the alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we were our weekend away, I did the flowers. So the vases were done. So I did these kind of, um, I don't know, sunflowery type flowers. I did them in the same color. And then I looked at the pattern and I realized that they actually are not in the same color. So I thought, right. So they're just kind of distant cousins as opposed to like twin siblings. So from now on, I'm making sure they don't match exactly. So for example, the star, the outside blue is different from the inside blue, but it's inverted in this side. And this one has a yellow in it and this one has an orange in it. So they're kind of close, but not exactly the same. And I love this. I am so, so happy and I have to force myself to go to sleep. Oh, yes, because I would just carry on. So I've done that one and I've done <clears throat> the bird. Oh, yes, I left my threads there. So I've done this bird. So what I do is I look at the... Um, sometimes a color comes to me and I'm like, oh, I, I fancy doing a blue star. But other times I will Google the color they suggested and then I kind of eyeball. Yep. Like if it's, um, if it's a, a gray green, I'll, I'll look for like some sort of green. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I have started, I saw this on a floss tube, I have started starting my threads from the front. So if I have a straight line to stitch, I bring in my thread here and I pull it out here, knowing that I'm going to stitch across and that's going to trap my thread and then I cut it from the front. It's supposed to be faster. So I'm enjoying doing that. Excellent. It feels like I'm kind of cheating the system, it's great. So I'm really enjoying it. Um, so this one has a poem by Benedetti, so I'm really happy about that. And I can't remember if it was in this one or in the other one that I talked about. Oh yeah, the one I'm gonna do next, the one, um, and the forest grow, because I want something in Spanish. So I had one friend of the floss tube um, suggest lots of poets, Mexican poets. And then today I thought, why am I looking at Mexican poets? So I just Googled Peruvian poets. And, and in Spanish, you, you know, it's, it's gendered. You know, you have the female poet. Um, so I've managed to find, I think, 16 women poets. So now I have, I have material. Excellent. And it was so <coughs> lovely. I read three poems by one of the women and they were so lovely. Um, oh, just because poetry is so beautiful. Even if you don't understand it, like hidden meaning or whatever mm -hmm. just the words the sound is like water running down some rocks poetry is not thrilled. my thing <laughs> it was, isn't it um no <clears throat> but i respect it as an art form i just love poetry i just think it's so beautiful and it irritates me that i know more poetry in english than i do in spanish so now have you ordered some books no oh. i'm trying to be good this is terrible, Victoria. I'm trying Have to be good. Have you books on your list? I, I've like poetry books. Not poetry books, but I thought about that today. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the last cross stitch thing that I've worked on is And the Forest Grew. Um, this is the bit where I'm going to read poetry and you're going to get awkward. But anyway. So I'm doing a, a stitch along with Ella from Spectrum Stitcher. She's got a floss tube in Australia. She lives near Melbourne. That's kind of cool. Melbourne has cool craft shops, apparently. 
And she did tell me how it was pronounced. So she either lives in Geelong or Geelong, and I'm just terrible with remembering that. Anyway, so we're doing a, a stitch along, and it's called With What You Have, Sal. So the idea is that if you have the cold for, you use it if you want to. But if you don't have the cold for, look for something that works in your stash. So that's right up my street. I don't have to make an effort. <laughs> um, they're making an effort though. And this, also this was designed by Rosewood Manor by Karen Kluber. And this is the most Moorish pattern. This is like um, His Eyes on the Sparrow. Yeah. I mean, this is another Mahusib one and I love it. I'm so happy doing this. And what I try to do, okay, I almost got mathematical. So one night after the last thing, I counted how many motifs there were. When I say counted, it wasn't in a, I have a PhD in math sort of way. <laughs> but I was, I, Donna, he has a PhD in, PhD in maths and she watches the, the floss tube. I counted a few and then I was like, and roughly 10 more, and roughly 10 more. So anyway, I figured out that I need to do five um, motifs per week. So Friday is my day off and that's when I try and get my five motifs done. Excellent. And it, of, of course, it worked out one week and it didn't work out the following week. But of course, this is not mathematical because that massive tree with the entire saying slash psalm poem whatever that's one motif <laughs> um but i love it but whilst i was shenaniganing because i love poetry but i don't know a lot about poetry i bought this book ages ago maybe two years ago something like that she is fierce there's a whole series of these books which are um it's a little bit like the reader's digest of you know, poetry. So, um, <coughs> anyway, oh, there was a book about the diaspora. Oh, to make a homeland. Oh my God. I haven't read all of these. Sophia nabbed it for a wee bit. Anyway, do you mind? <laughs> you judged my stitching. I can read a poem. There is a poem by Catherine Mansfield, who's a New Zealand writer. Although she left to live in the UK and never came back and died young, so that's all very tragic. Anyway, I'm not going to read you the entire poem. Go and look it up. It's called Chamomile Tea. But I love I'm going to read you the last, last four lines because it was so lovely. It's called Chamomile Tea and it's uh, the last four lines. We might be 50, we might be five. So snug, so compact, so wise are we. Under the kitchen table leg, my knee is pressing against his knee. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was like... Oh, that's like my marriage. Not sure we had a massive fight this, <laughs> this week. Um, uh, we're, we're very happy. <laughs> um, yeah, tricky though. 31 years together. Um, but when I read it, I was like, oh. So I want to do it, even though it's in English, I want to do it because Catherine Mansfield, she's a New Zealander. She's one of our treasures. Beautiful short stories. So is that what you're going to push in the tree? I don't know now because I've discovered all the Spanish oh. poems, so well, I don't you know. you could put the that verse in your New Zealand sampler. <gasps> oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Yes. Oh, also, maybe this is a good time. <laughs> this is a good time to say. Kim from Cataloging My Stitches. <laughs> Hello, Kim. Hello, Kim. I am very enthusiastic. That's all I can say to defend myself. What did you do? She put, I don't know if it was, she put a comment in our floss tube or... She, or she asked a question in her floss tube. Anyway, Kim's a librarian. She's one cool woman. And uh, <laughs> she said, I really keep meaning to ask you about New Zealand literature. And I literally went to town. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, when English people say, how are you? And uh, people that are not from England think they mean it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, let me just draw breath here, Kim. <laughs> Oh. And I just wouldn't stop. <laughs> anyway, all that to say, um, apparently, Virginia Woolf knew Catherine Mansfield. And Ooh. apparently... Oh, see, now you're interested. This is a New Zealander. Do you want to know why I'm interested? No, in... I'm going to tell my story first. And apparently, Virginia Woolf was jealous of Catherine Manfield, Mansfield's writing. She was the only person she was jealous of. Mm. 
And which is interesting because I can read Catherine Mansfield and I find it so hard to read Virginia Woolf. Like I have to resort to audiobooks to try and kind of push my way through. <laughs> anyway, so I'm sorry, Kim. I'm very, you know, like I'm just a frustrated librarian. <laughs> Anyway, tell me why you're interested in Virginia Woolf more than Catherine Mansfield. Because Elizabeth Taylor played her in the movie. (laughs) (laughs) What can I say? What can I say? Uh, See, and I wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about. (laughs) No movie. Virginia Woolf. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Catherine, Ma- uh, not Catherine Mansfield. So, um, so the, I've heard of the film Elizabeth Taylor, Taylor, Virginia Woolf, and Richard Burton. But is that about Virginia Woolf? I think so. I can't remember. I've watched it in ages. I don't know. And now I'm going to have to look into it. I have no pop culture con- uh, knowledge. Mm. I'm just like the worst. Um, but I've heard of the film, and I know that um, what was the name of the actress? Elizabeth Taylor. She has. She had violet eyes. She did indeed, and she had um, many husbands. <laughs> Well, she married the same one twice, so, you know. Um, and she had... Did How she have a gene mutation? She had, anyway, somehow, she had a double layer of eyelashes, which is why her eyes were always stunning. That was before there were products. <laughs> yep. Anyway, I think my literary tidbit is way more interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, just, you know... Is that all your cross I don't get commission, but, you know. These books are great. They've got a few, but I just couldn't quite justify spending all the money at the same time because i want to show these again i don't think i did them justice i was a bit overwhelmed at the start right so (laughs) i couldn't find the words (laughs) i'm sorry people so these i'm just going to show these again these this is from stitchyprincess.etsy.com and she has got a whole range of these beautiful little um patterns that she's designed herself self and i think that a lot of them are inspired by the folk tales of um ukraine and presumably eastern europe eastern europe and so this is the stitch along one this is a magical swamp and it all i don't know quite why it reminded me of the frog prince i think presumably because there's a frog and he's got a crown on him i'm not sure if that's the inspiration or not cool uh didn't say i'm just gonna see how big they are Yep, this one is Forest Foxes. And I think there's going to be a great pincushion size because Catherine and I are both a bit obsessed with pink pincushions. And I think it's so cute because I also super love foxes. We should say her name. Her name is Katerina Voskobojnikova. Excellent. And if you want to follow her on Instagram, I'll put it down there, but she's stitch underscore princess underscore black. And that's the oh. L one. It's super cute. So I'm going to turn the... the... Also, it's 123 by 123 stitches. Yep, interest. And this one is 83 by 83. So that's a good pincushion size. That's, that's the... the one I love. The yeah. foxy one. Super cute. Super cute foxy. I mean, there are some things that... And she had, she's had got lots of designs and patterns up. Oh, and she's got. little. Um, a beautiful one with a girl in a field of sunflowers, which if I had realised that sunflowers were the um, national flower, national flower <laughs> when I was buying these, I would have bought that one too. So I'll go back and get that at some stage. Mm. Yeah. But go check her out. They were very affordable. I might go and have a look. Find um, an intersection that mm. I like. Yeah. Anyway. It's always good to support. Let's do some questions. So we did ask. So this is oh, going to be a long I've video. I've got all my other stuff. But when let's are we going to do it? We'll do it all. We'll just have a super long video. Okay. Can we just move the seat forward? Because it's, it's doing my head and I have to come. come. Okay. All right. We're going to be here forever apparently. Because we are not leaving without me showing you all the other stuff I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You want the questions. Yeah. I don't think we should do all the questions. Because some of them are, would be quite long. Okay. We'll just check, pick, pick a couple. So we asked last week as part of our celebration of the year. If you have any questions, um, let us know. And so we, Catherine has re- very kindly written down the questions. Okay, so first question is, what's your favourite finish? But we haven't prepared because we I haven't prepared. I'm it. completely Shall we on save the spot? that one for save that one for next time? Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I don't have that um, many finishes. Because I don't. Oh well, I could show you because I love this yeah. one because sentimental. Oh, so one you finished as part of this video. So I love this one because it was just like lots of little bits and apparently 
What is that sort of design? Some people I've heard call it Tree of Life, mm -hmm. which sounds lovely to me. Um, but it's got my girl's initials and Martin and I, so I love this. So this was a pattern that, if I recall, originally had two figures below the tree and you decided to replace them with That's initials. right. And then I also decided to do whatever the hell I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you were very fluid matter. in your run. Because it didn't matter, it's just a suggestion. And it's super cute. Was it called Friends? I can't remember. Friendship Tree or something. I don't know. Someone said, see, I'm not about buying products. I'm like, I'm not particularly interested. But someone had these tags that you can buy. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, of course, the people that produce them make them with like beautiful images of some, a bit like floss drops, mm -hmm. beautiful images of samplers and that sort of thing. But then they have space for you to write your name, the year you finished it, the name of the piece. <sighs> and the designer and I think that was a really good Ooh, idea. I feel that we should be adding those Partly because I worry that some of these, especially because the fabrics are all those stuff, people that don't know will think these might be original and they're mm. not. They're just copies of things. Especially with all the um the reproduction of the historical ones, which is yeah, yeah. It's great. I've got a whole pile of those um yeah, hands yeah, across yeah. the We sea love one. them. But I think it, it's not a bad thing to um, yeah. To have on it, uh, you know, just to acknowledge the original artist. Yeah. So cool. um, I, I don't even know what they're called, but a couple of people have shown them in their in their programs recently. I probably won't buy them. I probably will make my own. Yes. But anyway, I love this one, I, and I haven't written who asked the questions. I'm sorry. Oh, She's um, not that organised. <clears throat> so the next question is, what's your favourite whip? Oh, that is a hard question because that varies from week to week. So. This week, I reckon my favourite one that I worked on was the a unicorn, a badger, and a mm. peacock. That's not the right order, but that one. But I also really enjoy every time I get it out the um, the autumn quaker one that I have been walking on, walking on. Oh my goodness, that I have been working on this year, nice. which is almost finished. <clears throat> um, I think my favourite whip at the moment is his eyes on the sparrow. My version. Because I get to play, I don't, I don't have to stick to their colours, I'm just doing whatever I want, which is where I'm happiest. But the designer has done such an amazing job. And also, what's the name of that designer? I've already forgotten. Oh, it's Heartstrong Snapper. <clears throat> but what I love, see, I just, I was like, oh, we, we would be friends. Um, is it a Carol Todd? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Beth Twist. Oh yes, Beth Twist. But what I love about these patterns, oh, I can't remember. Oh, yes. She says, see, a woman after my own heart. Suggestions. Change up the colour scheme. Pick and choose your favourite motifs to turn into ornaments or pink cushion, pin cushions. Stitch it over one and frame it to add to your sample collection. Have fun. Oh, are you going to send her a picture when you're finished and email no. it to her? God no. That's more admin. <laughs> We're not so hot on the admin. I'm not, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, so, someone suggested, because I'm always banging on about, what do I do with a churn? Like, I make a lot of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and they say, like, oh, why don't you just change your decor? I was like, are you kidding me? Like, add life admin every two months to change my house? <laughs> no way. So Plus, you've got to store it. I think that's a good American. I think that's very American, like, the, um, like culturally. Mm. I have a friend that lived there for a few years and she was saying, yes, people do make an effort. They change things for Halloween. They change things for Thanksgiving. They change things for Christmas. They put things out for Valentine's Day. I mean, no, I don't have staff at home. Oh. I am kind of the staff. Yeah. That's not going to happen. But anyway, fun to watch <laughs> well, as long as somebody else is doing the work. Yeah. So anyway, that was my whip. Um, <clears throat> what do your craft rooms look like? Oh, so I think we'll I think we'll just do a tour. We'll do a tour. I think Zeb suggested that one. Yes, <laughs> we will definitely do a tour. My craft room is really unexciting, but we will do a tour and we'll add it on as a separate video. Yes. Um. What have I missed? One. Oh yeah. What's yeah. your absolute want but may never have? I don't know. I am in the fortunate position that if I pace myself. Stitching wise, I kind of got everything or can get everything that I want. Except, I mean, there's always the unicorn ones, but I can't think of what's on my unicorn list. If you pace yourself and you don't want everything at once, you can mm. have anything you want. Exactly. Yeah. 
Am I, on the other hand, because <laughs> I'm a contradiction, I'm turning 50 this year and I keep, um, like I don't like stuff, like I, I worry about consumerism, but I love how I've started, for, for like a couple of years, I started hearing people talk about their birthday month. <laughs> I am like the worst Grinch on birthdays. Like I am terrible human. I make people's lives difficult because I refuse to be celebrated or to have presents and I'm just a nightmare. Um, but if I could have something, it would be with no judgment, no worrying about the environment or excessive consumerism or money or time to make things. If I just had a thousand dollars to buy patterns and linens. So you want a shopping spree? Yes. I'm never going to do it. Mm. I mean, I have the money. Of course I have the money. I get paid more than that every fortnight, but that doesn't mean I want to spend it on that. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Pay the bills. Pay the bills. Um, yeah. You know, I've got my girls to think about, but I think it's not even the money. It's more like the suspend all your ethics, Catherine, and mm. just do that. Because it's the ethics, really, that stop me from being silly. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? so much fun interesting question so sorry i've just been thinking about my you know. answer more is that with these unicorn patterns or with the you know you see something and you really 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 want it and i have spent not necessarily on cross stitch but i have spent hours looking on ebay and all various auction sites for certain things that i really 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 want sometimes i get them and sometimes i don't but it's sort of I find myself like I might finally get something I've been looking for for ages and then I'm like oh I've got it the chase is the, the thing. chase is the thing and the little buzz when you shop but then yeah you get another little buzz when it arrives and I'm finding with the cross stitch patterns that there might be stuff that I really really love but then three weeks later there's something else I love just as much or even more. oh yeah so I I really try not to get too hooked on looking for out-of-print patterns yeah, I'm see I'm not concerned about out of print because I think eh, there'll be other things. Yeah. But there are things that I'd love. It's the Uffenden, the Uffenden sisters. That's mm -hmm. that's the one. I'd love to do that, for example. But they were like twenty-eight dollars each. So that's fifty-six dollars US, which was more like eighty dollars mm -hmm. New Zealand. That's a lot of money. Um the linen is expensive. Not that I don't think it's worth it, but you know, the New Zealand economy is different from the American economy. There's no two ways about it. Um, but it's still a great question. But I think that you've got to, yeah. if, if there's something you super, super want, I, I, I'm at the stage of my life where I'm now taking a step back and sort of, if I see something I really like, I want to walk away from it for a week. And if I still really, really want it, then I'll go get it. Unless she walks into Stitch Witches. I've been a witness to that. Yeah. <laughs> That we're like marketing. Yeah. Marketing is there as a as a specialty at, in the university because it works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we was we were saying when I was watching that the the YouTube video and writing down all these things that I really really wanted mm. because other people were showing them and showing these amazing stitches that they've done, and I was having another look at them later and trying to decide right which one am I going to get when? And there were actually a few there which, while beautiful, I actually didn't want. Oh yeah, and this is why it's so great mm. to be able to create a list. Yeah. That's why I love Pinterest, because pinning something is often as much as I need to do. Mm. Um, so the list makes me feel like, oh yeah. Like, in fact, I probably won't buy many smalls because I have design books. I have lots of resources. I can make my own smalls. Mm. Um, and every so often buy patterns. I mean, I do want Consider the Lilies as well. Yes. I think she's amazing. But yeah, anyway, fun question. <laughs> like... <laughs> After we've done this, Catherine and I, I think, are going to go and do a wee We're shopping trip on one, two, three, chip, one, two, three stitch. Yeah. But I don't actually think there's anything on my list that I'm absolutely dying to get, except for threads, so I can do my um, Rosewood Manor. Not Rosewood Manor. Yeah, Rosewood Manor, my Quaker series, because you can't get the threads here. Is that Valdani? Yes. Yeah. Someone said that they, they quilted with Valdani. Holy macaroni, that is so expensive. They were not New Zealanders. <laughs> um, what have you learned about cross stage that you wish you had known when you started? Okay, so I'm going to reduce that question even further to suit myself. <laughs> See, she has got a very strong personality <laughs> on cross stage. 
So a year ago when we started doing the floss tube videos, it was the first time that I had come across and I was using variegated threads. I had wish I had known a year ago when I started, and I mean I, I got into them big time, and I am into them big time, and I really enjoy the over dyed flosses and I love it. But I wish that I had known that when you are stitching with over dyed flosses, it is. <laughs> I don't want to say it's a rule, but it's that's it, how she feels in her heart. In though. my heart, I now because I've read it. <laughs> I do feel that it is a rule that I didn't know, and so now I feel that I have to start all my cross stitches again. I'm not going to because. <laughs> but Ella said it's also a rule because you've read it in that magazine that you can do your stitches willy nilly to add texture. Yeah, that's yeah. a rule. So, for those of you who are now waited with waiting with bated breath about what this rule is, is that when you do variegated floss, <laughs> you complete the cross and then you move on to the next one. The so is, that right? is something I'd wish I'd okay. known a year okay. ago. The thing is right. She's laughing, so you think this is a joke. It ain't. <laughs> she really cares. It's like a wound in her yeah. bleeding heart. So, the, <laughs> particularly for uh, the pumpkin carriage cross stitch, that's an Al Forest one that I'm doing, that I'm doing one over one on a 28 count. I don't have it here, it's at home. Um, I think it would look so much better if I had done the completed crosses. But I've only got a tiny bit left to finish it, and I'm like, well, do I just scrap it and start again? Or see, but I, I think, it? see, okay, my thing is that once things are done and mounted and whatever, you don't even notice. That is true. But I know in my heart. And, I know in my and, heart. And if your mum had done that, you'd be like, mum, that looks beautiful. Don't be silly. Do not undo it. It looks beautiful. Yeah. We're just such critics of ourselves. I'm not. I'm like totally chill about it. <laughs> but humans, as a general rule, are so critical of themselves. Yeah. So I'll give her therapy. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'll stop her. What else? Is there anything else that I wish I'd known? Well, I do know it now. So I started cross-stitching when I, I reckon I was between eight, nine, ten. Like, I was oh. quite young. And I wish I had known, uh, particularly in the last 10, 15, 20 years, because I've been a very um, on-again, off-again cross-stitcher. So I used to buy all my cross-stitch through um, the Fox Magazine collection, which is a great magazine that they produce, but it is very... Um, like it's a small selection and I thought that was all the cross stitches there were. So it used I, to be though. It used to be. So I was not exposed to the re these reproduction samplers or these all these amazing things. This is the that point at which she said thanks to me because it was me that opened that door that for that. her. <laughs> so whereas I would do one or two one cross stitch every two or so years and they were nothing wrong with them. They were like the Winnie the Pooh one or the Art and Vogue ladies I've got, which are beautiful. They are beautiful. Um or I've got these Venus ones, which I don't think I've shown, I should show those too, that I've done. They're beautiful, but I feel that what I'm stitching now is way more my style. And mm. I just wish that I had done what I should have done and Googled some stuff. Yeah, but you just don't know what you don't know. And I think I spend yeah. a lot more time online than you do. So of course you wouldn't have known. Yeah, and I think when I was searching, I was searching Pinterest. And I didn't realise at the time... Um, maybe it's how I was searching, but I was getting a lot of the the, like, the knockoff patterns or the... Mm -hmm. But don't forget also that another thing that has happened, which is very recent, is that a lot of this world was hidden. Yes. And then 2020 happened and a lot of the world just kind of exploded on our screens yeah. because people were at home and stuff. So a lot of it was hidden. There'll be, you know, even now there'll be people that are wondering why there aren't any more better designs because if, if you think mm. that going to spot that which is one of our you know a big box craft store is all there is for cross stitch it's disappointing they're not yep. very good um so yeah it's just you know yeah there'll be other crafts it's like food like when i discovered pesto i must have been 27 yeah and i was i'm always like oh my god what food have i not tried that would be amazing so yeah well we've discovered it now so yes. all is well um, what, have, um, what about you? What have you learned? What have you? I have learned that Victoria is very picky about rules. <laughs> and I've also learned that I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, nothing, nothing earth shattering. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to have discovered linens. I, I think that's probably the most important thing for me. Because even with dyed... Um, Ada, it doesn't take the dye in the same way. 
there is that softness and the fluidity to linen that I love. So I'm really happy about that. Excellent. But, um, you know, I'm just glad to have rediscovered cross stitch because it is quite relaxing. Mm. It's probably the least um, taxing as far as my creativity goes. I quite often will do it later at night because my brain can rest because it's, it's basically counting. So that's kind of relaxing. Yeah. And, you know, um, when you're having a tough time or like the news are horrible, it's just so comforting to do something like cross stitch. Yeah, I think I would agree so, with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> top tips on starting a floss tube, equipment, recording, processing, etc. Just start. Um, we just start it. You don't need any. Okay, so realistically, you need a phone or something to film on. So if you have got a computer at home that has a camera in it, mm. um, the only piece of equipment we use is a tripod with a ring light behind it. You don't need that. That was. You found it cheap. Online. It was $15 on a NZ sale website, so it was cheap. Yeah. Um, the first few videos we did, we just propped it up on books. One There's... video. It was just one video. First video we did? Okay. Yeah. Um, propped it up on books. I think the main thing is just to start. Don't worry if you introduce yourself as the wrong person. Um, <laughs> don't worry if you accidentally swear or like our first few videos we had so many issues with kicking the tables when and... I swear is never accidental <laughs> you keep banging the table I do though. keep banging the table yeah. um, just do it, it's so much fun I'm so pleased we've done it yeah. um, we've met a whole pile of people we're constantly it's wonderful yeah. it's, it's been so good for our um, keeping us on track and getting stuff done yeah, um, but you don't need anything fancy. Mm. Just something to film. I will say, um, I'm very surprised. Like Victoria and I are not thinking that this is going to become our careers. Like we're not doing a floss tube with the idea that someone will pick us up and we'll have 20 million floss tubers and a, and a Patreon. Mm. We're not thinking that. So because that's at the the sort of lens that we're looking at this, it's like we don't need a professional setup. So I'm always really surprised when people say. Oh, I've got to get better lighting. I've got to get a bit a microphone. No, we use our phones. We have a ring light that costs twenty US dollars. No, no, it costs fifteen New Zealand dollars. Oh, okay, yeah, and we we went shares these. So <laughs> seven fifty each. Yeah. Um, mm. You really don't need a lot. You you don't have to overcomplicate things. No. Uh, we do this for free. If people think that the lighting's not good, they, some people probably won't like the shine that there was on my shirt today. Yeah. Um, we're doing a video for free. It's just for fun. And people take it in the spirit of it. Mostly people take it in the spirit of that. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is great. I love spending an hour and 20 minutes with you. Yeah. Um, so so don't, don't let the money get in the way. Or thinking that you have to have something. All you need is something yeah. that will film you. And that's yeah. it. Um, I would also say, um, don't edit. If the thing that's stopping you is the edit, don't edit. Yeah. Like, I like the floss tubes where people are just human. If I wanted to see something polished, I probably could find it. Yeah. I'm just not interested in that. Um, so, for those, of us who have, for those of you who have watched all our videos, you'll have seen that at various times we tried different edits and different ways of doing things. Um, it's been a lot of trial and error in the last year. Mm. Um, we have found that not editing is the way to go because what we were doing was we'd film for the hour then it would be, sorry, another hour and a half or another. It was making it just way too complicated for it to be something that we do for fun. Yeah, and you were doing all the editing yeah. and you already spend a whole work day looking at a computer. Yeah. Like you don't need this in your life. So that's why we just put it all up, warts and all. I will say that I have been wanting to do a knitting podcast for at least three years. So at least two years before we started this one. Mm -hmm. And I was too shy to do it on my own. So I would say maybe a key thing is find a friend to do it with. And then that will strengthen your friendship. Mm. It will, you'll have someone to bore you up when you're um, feeling a little bit... Mm. Um, because it's just such a lovely thing to do. Don't let the practical side of things um, no. hold you back. And I think people also like, like the banter that you get mm. between two people. We have such different personalities that there are people that are like, Oh my God, Catherine, can you just shush because I want to hear about Victoria's rules <laughs> and vice versa. You know, it my just makes it a little bit more creative. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're really happy to answer like questions. If you have um, like a technical question, like 
I want to do it and I, don't, I just don't know what button to press. Mm. DM us, we're happy to yeah. help. And if you do want to go down the editing route, um, I'm happy to tell you what I learned. I did it all on, is it iFilm? So we do all of this. iMovie. iMovie, thank you. I am on the youth. What we can do basically on the phone. Yeah. I don't have a desktop computer at home. I have a laptop which I bought 15 years ago that occasionally will turn on, but it's I couldn't load the video on it. So it's all done on my phone. Mm. Um, I, I um, <clears throat> Even I have learned to do some bits of edit, but I'm yeah. just not interested. Like, you know, that sounds like work. Yeah. Nah. I, I will say, especially if you are... If you're bringing something different to the table, if you're a Māori New Zealander or a Pacifica New Zealander or a, um, an 18 year old across stitches or, you know, just something different, um, just go for it. There is room for everybody at the table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And the last question is, how did we meet? We've told this already, but how did we meet? How Victoria? did we meet? Do you reckon we can name it? Are you happy to share that information? This is quite top secret now. <laughs> so Catherine and I met a long long time ago about five ten years ago nine now actually nine years ago nine years ago um, when we both worked at the Otago University in property services so I was in the design team and Catherine came in to be a records manager is that what you was that your title nah but know. thanks <laughs> did, I, did I bump you up a couple you of bumped pay? me up yeah nice yep, thank you appreciate that Catherine came in and saved all the um, the records yes um, but my office, we're going to call it an office, record spaces are never glamorous. <laughs> but my office was an office. It was private. It had a door. It was next to the copier room. And people could come into my office and hide and chat. Yeah. Like if they were having a tough time, they could come and decompress in my office. Yeah. And we had, we had some great times. We had a, a ukulele club in yeah. there at lunchtime so we'd go at down one point. And, yeah. We had craft meeting, um, like short meetings there about like, random things that we were planning like challenges yeah. that we were doing yeah we did set up challenges it was great yeah. fun yeah so um, that we met at work and then and I... also the that division was very um male oriented it was a building division mm -hmm. there weren't that many women so you know like all 12 of us found each other pretty quickly yeah. and but it was amazing how many women in there all had a craft so it wasn't all necessarily cross stitch but mm. there were knitters there were photographers there were cross stitches there are um quilters yeah. it was amazing lots yeah. of textile arts lots of dabbling weavers. and lots of things yeah yeah so we it was great yeah yeah we had a good time but then everyone left property services they already left property <laughs> services <laughs> i think i was one of the last from our little group mm. of, of women that used to get together i was probably the last one got the joy when i left i've got to be careful it, it was just lonely. You know, when you have a group of friends yeah. and then they all leave, it's just lonely. Yeah. For for about two years there, it was amazing. With the mm. woman and the, the creativity and the, mm. we had craft club once a week and everyone would come to someone's house and it was amazing. But then, I used to have as things happen, buddies. yeah, it was great. As, as all things, you know, people leave and move on and, mm. yeah. but we kept in contact. Yeah. And then I followed Catherine out to Port Chalmers and then she's leaving me again. Yeah, it's a bit sad, but not, not very soon because the market's <laughs> dead. <laughs> anyway, okay, so that, that's all the questions. And can I talk about my craft now? Now she can talk about your other stuff. God. Okay, so thank you for everybody that watched my um, quilting video. Excellent. Um, I, I deleted, somehow, the quilting video in Spanish never existed. <gasps> so did you not press play? I, I, I think I did, but I think I probably pressed it again when by accident. When you're sorting anyway. it up, yeah. But you will have seen that Christina's quilt has stars. Well, I was looking at my craft stuff and I've got some left. So, oh, so I'm cute. quite excited because I'm actually going to make something for myself Ooh. with this. And I even thought of maybe doing a project back like cross stitchers have. Because I was watching Elena. No, not Elena. Olivia. Olivia B. I used to watch Elena and I'd never watched Olivia. So now I'm fangirling both of them. Although Elena doesn't video anymore. Um, and she did um, uh, a quilty bag, not a quilty bag, a cross stitch bag with a zip, but with, she's got a goat thing, cross stitch, and it just looks so cute. And I thought I could do it with this. So I'm thinking about it. I've just finished this. So it's just a star and I've put some, some of the fabrics um, together. I do love it. So anyway, I did that. And then my ridiculous, 
my ridiculous project that I'm doing at the moment is my crumb quilt, which Victoria calls... Crumble. It's a crumble quilt. <laughs> she goes, you know your crumble quilt? I was like, no, Victoria, it's a crumb quilt. <laughs> so these are crumbs. So um, these are all the crumbs that I'm now working on. So I did a whole little... I did a whole... I did like a three minute, no, 30 second um, Instagram video of my crumb quilting. Um, because I have all these tiny little bits that I love that I don't want to get rid of. Now, when people do crumb quilting, they normally do it by machine because that is sensible. I'm doing it by hand because I am me. I'm having the best time. It's going to take me forever. Um, which is to say it'll probably take me a year. Um, no, take me six months. Um, so anyway, I've got all my bits, but I wanted to show you how far I got. So I've got two ideas for my crumb quilts. Mm -hmm. One is going to be a king size, just crumb quilts. And then I'm going to do, um, like a negative of a bird. Mm -hmm. I don't know in what color. And then I'm going to applique it to one corner. Cool. That's one idea. But the idea that I'm working on first is I'm going to do reverse applique of these circles. Oh, that's so cool. And probably on a blue background. So, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing it by hand, I've had to, I mark it, so I use different plates and cups and saucers. Um, because I like that, I don't want to buy templates. I like mm -hmm. the idea of using things from the kitchen like women in the olden days did. So I marked it with a pencil because that's not going to be visible. And then I had to go around doing running and then backstitch, running and every time there was a join, I did a backstitch but with running stitch. So it's taken a wee while. But anyway, I'll just show you. I love how I can see fabrics that you've used in other quilts. Exactly. Like, oh, that's a neck quilt, that's a neck quilt. Yeah, it's, a, it's what I call like it's my family lovely. of fabrics. I, yeah. That, that is one of the things that I love. Um, and, and then I, today, when I finished the circles, I went and I put them on my bed because I'm like a great measurer. <laughs> I threw them on my bed and I was like, oh, I think I need 16 more. <laughs> no, 18 more. So it's like how you counted the trays. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> um, so I'm so thrilled with how this is going. I'm very much looking forward to completing this because, partly because, I, you know, I, I, it's good to have distractions. Now that my baby's gone to uni and I finished her quilt, um, I said to my daughter-in-law, who I've never made her anything, um, if she wanted a quilt. So she has brought me um, the leftover fabrics from her wedding outfit. So she's got a cream linen and like a brick linen. She had a very simple outfit. It was just like a little boat neck blouse short sleeves and um, like a circle skirt. And she's also got this little bit of um, like bobbin lace left over. So these are linen. So I think I've decided that I'm gonna do it all with linen just because the fabrics are quite different. I don't know, I'm thinking about it. Anyway, I went through my stash. I love that sound. And I pulled out all the bits of linen that I have, the kind of leftovers. And I thought because this is her wedding outfit, I thought I might make um, my version. You know how I always do like a variation on a theme? So instead of an Irish quilt, it's like an almost Irish quilt. So there is a quilt called the wedding ring quilt. I have no interest in doing a whole wedding ring quilt. I would find that quite boring and time consuming, but an almost wedding ring quilt, that sounds quite appealing. So Excellent. I've got that to work on as well. But I have to let the ideas marinate as well. Um, then, I just want to show you this. I found my badge with my pronouns. I was very happy. Um, and the reason I hadn't seen them for ages is because this cardigan needed mending. So I did some Swiss darning. Looks quite thick. I need to give it a wash anyway. I'll soak anyway. Um, and then I did some darning here as well. So this is no longer like super, super fancy. <laughs> Was it ever? Um, but that's the thing with thin wool, you know, it will wear. And I don't really like Swiss darning. It kind of did my head in a little bit, but you know, it was good to get it done. 
But then that meant that I could start another cardigan because that one's starting to wear. So I ordered some wool from the UK, from Woolly Knit. Is it called Woolly Knit? Yarn to Kern. It's called, it's, the, the, the brand is Woolly Knit. And isn't this great? It's called Wimbledon Green. Oh, Very nice. Amazing. It's like an app, it's like a granny smear. Yeah, I can see why it's called Wimbledon. It's like that nice green. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be a very similar cardigan to that one. So no pattern. I'm making it up as I go along with lace because I like it. So I'm excited with this. And then, oh, that's my quilt. Oh, I don't really want to show you this because it's going to a friend in the UK. But I have finished a cowl that I'm designing. I'm turning 50, so maybe I'm gonna, instead of shopping, I'm going to turn it into like achievements. Excellent. I want to publish a pattern. Uh, for knitting. Um, I want to publish a pattern for cross stitch. Not like they can be my like in the year in the that I turned done. 50 I did these things. Excellent. But um, So I've done one cowl and I'm doing another one to just actually write out the pattern in proper English as opposed to like um, and of course I'm gonna do it in English and in Spanish. So if anyone out there is also a knitter and they're interested in um, testing this pattern please let me know. I'll need someone to test it in English and someone to test it in Spanish. It's going to be a free pattern, so it's not like um, I'm going to make money out of it, but it's good to have, um, you know, something that kind of is professional and looks good. So let me know if you're interested. So there is that. And I've got some shopping. Do you have any shopping to show? I've got no shopping. This oh, I've showed my shopping already. Oh, so okay. So lovely Etsy designs. Um, So what do I call it? Pantry. Stitch pantry. Not a shopper, but... Craft pantry. Yeah, <laughs> no, craft pantry. So, <clears throat> I bought a few yarns. I don't buy second-hand yarns apart from the when I go to the op shop. So if you want to make a whole jumper or a whole cardigan, you kind of have to buy them new. You're not going to get enough in the op shops. I buy it in the op shops for little things. But um, I quite like using cones. They're more economical than balls. So I bought that green that I showed, this beautiful mustard color that I just love. It's called Harvest. This is a UK company. So I was buying from, I was buying Super Soft from that Danish company whose name I've forgotten. But now I know of this British company. And you know, my allegiance is to Britain after New Zealand. So Peru, Britain, New Zealand, you know, I've got my little triangle. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I'd try them out. And my friend Donna, he very kindly uh, posted that to me. Or will they not post for you? They would, but I was, so, I was just so stunned by the cost mm. that I asked her to post it and actually it would cost the same. So now I've learned my lesson, but it was very lovely of her to say yes. And I've got this variegated grey as well, which is more variegated than I thought it would be, but I think knitted up is going to kind of smooth over. It would make beautiful socks, that variegation. Uh, yeah, but that's not the right wool for socks. Oh, okay. I don't think it's coarse enough. Um, and then I got this, which is thinner, so this one's thinner than the other one. But the, this grey I love. Now, is there more wool on one of those cones than in there? Yes. So this is 500 grams and this is 200 grams. Oh. Yeah. And so they're, they're kind of different, like different um, styles of wool that they sell. Mm -hmm. um, weirdly, this one's 500 grams too, but it's so fat compared to... <laughs> I was like, oh, did I, did I order the wrong thing? <laughs> so I weighed them, they weigh exactly the same. So this one, these ones have been like very compactedly mm -hmm. Ripped packed. tighter, yep. yeah. Did you like my word compactedly? Compactedly is a great word. Right, isn't it? And then, I love the sound, I bought this in Aaron because my husband has blue eyes and I thought he would look cute. Beautiful. What are you going to make out of there? A hat for him. Also, I'm not, I, I don't like going to the brand new shops. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes a birthday comes along and I just have to go into my craft room and see what I can give them as a gift. So I've been buying a bit of yarn because when, when we travel, like I call it my souvenir <clears throat> shopping. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had to give it away twice, like as gifts, because mm -hmm. I refuse to go to the shops. So this tops up for what I lost. And the best bit. So one hour 34. It's okay. I am so excited about these. So 
remember when I was telling you about that podcaster that's rambly? Well, I love her. I'm also fangirling her. So her name is oh, Frances O'Rourke Dowell. And these are quilting novels. So she's a, a I'm gonna say proper writer, but because she's also a quilter, she, she writes um, young adult and primary school children sort of oh. books and novels. But because she's a quilter, and she's a modern quilter, um, she thought she would write novels and short stories about quilting. So I'm so looking forward to this. So birds in the air. Birds in the air, which is quite thick, relatively. And um, Margaret Goes Modern, which is short stories. I love a short story. You know, once you have children, short stories are great. <laughs> Because for like over a decade, you've only got the energy to read one short story. Mm. So I'm so looking forward to this. Um, and also, it's that thing of, um, she's got over, I think she's got over 200 sessions of the podcast. Oh, wow. She doesn't ask for a coffee donation or a Patreon donation. So I kind of feel like, well, I'll buy her buy novels books, yeah. and I'll talk about, you know, I'll mention her in a... Mm. Um, so if you're a maker and you, you're a quilter and you want to read some of her, her work, go for it. I think she'll be great. I love her style. So, mm. yeah, I think that's it. Excellent. Whew. So I will add the video of us trying to work out how to use the random YouTube comment picker. Which is not as funny as it could have been because I hadn't pressed record for quite a while. I didn't realise I hadn't pressed record. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> for all the bits where we're like, what? Um, <clears throat> so we'll add that to the end. I hope you guys have a good fortnight. I hope you get some stitching done, or some shopping, or some reading, or some TV watching. I hope you take some time for you. Mm. So have a look at the patterns that Victoria mentioned. Give a donation if you can afford to. Help in your community if you can. But also look after yourself so if mm. don't watch too much news it's not good for you it's not good for our mental health to watch too much news you know have time use time to, to do stitching and relax as well yeah look after yourselves and we'll see you hopefully in the zoom on saturday oh yeah i forgot about that all right see you soon <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> all right people this is the drawer we're just about to do it. We're doing it with the, what is it? The random YouTube comment picker. Yeah. We have entered, okay, Catherine's pressed go. Yeah. <laughs> this has been, ooh, Kathy, hello. Great, Kathy Balcom. Excellent. Oh, well, I'm adding this at the end so you can tell we're not cheating. Now we're going to do some sleuthing. Okay. Bye. <laughs>